Well, this is the 10th and final video of the 10 part login to Firebase with SwiftUI playlist series. In this video, we'll be implementing sign in with Apple. Here we are at the final video in the playlist series. We want to be able to create an account and authenticate with sign in with Apple. Fortunately for us, Firebase has provided us with the mechanism. The challenge was getting it into my code. And again, I want to thank Alex Nagy, Rebeloper, for his video on this, and it inspired this entire series. You can review the Google Docs as well, and I'll leave a link to both in the notes below. If I go to the Sign In with Apple view, I see I have a couple of warnings. The first one is that I need to provide a nonce. We have a current nonce optional string variable all set up waiting for assignment. For every sign in request, we need to generate a random string and that's a nonce, which we will use to make sure that the Apple ID token we get was granted specifically in response to our Apple's authentication request. In our FB auth namespace, we have a function called random nonce string that we can use. And this code comes directly from the Firebase documentation. So to solve our first warning, we can replace it with current nonce equals FB auth dot random string. And now we need to do something with the authorization controllers did complete with authorization function. Before we go there, notice that our authorization controller will use a nonce. And we also create what is called an ID token string. When we attempt to authenticate, we will need these two things. And we're going to replace this warning with the sign in with Apple authorization function that's in our FB auth namespace. So let's take a look at that now. Here we see that we will accept the ID token string and nonce that I just mentioned and create an OAuth credential. It then uses this credential to attempt to authenticate with Firebase. If it fails, the completion result parameter is the failure with error and it returns. Similarly, if we get no result back from Apple, we complete with failure. What I'm interested in is the successful response that will be an auth data result. So let's go back to our sign in with Apple view and call this function passing in our ID token string and nonce. We'll switch on result, and if it's a failure, we'll just print the error. If it's a success, we're going to have to handle this response, which you see is an auth data result. So we'll get to that. So let's go back to FB auth. This function that we'll go through in just a minute will need both the auth result that we got back from the sign in with Apple function and the same Apple ID credential to verify that the request is a legitimate one. We'll pass this in as a tuple, but to make it easier to read, we can create a type alias called sign in with Apple result that will be a tuple containing these two elements. The first, we give a name auth data result, which is of type auth data result. And the second will be our Apple ID credential, which is of type AS authorization Apple ID credential. So now on to the function that will accept this tuple and handle it. It's appropriately named handle. It uses this to sign in with Apple. From our first tuple component, we can retrieve the UID. Now it's important to note that when you first sign in with Apple, the name is only returned on the first sign in and never again. So if you want to store that in your Firestore collection, as we do, you must capture it here. So we can retrieve the full name from the second sign in with Apple result component, the Apple ID credential. This will provide the full name in parts, including the given middle and family names. So we can concatenate these into a single name. And if the name is an empty string, there's nothing to concatenate and the subsequent login and account would already have existed. We also retrieve the email. 
Now we can use the fbuserdatadict function to create our data dictionary and pass it on to the same merge fbuser function in the fbfirestore file namespace that we used when we did the email sign-in. The datadict function, as we saw two videos ago, will check to see if there's a name, and so passes the dictionary on to the merge function. And we'll know then if it's an update or a creation of a new user. Now, back in the sign in with Apple view, let's call that function. I'm first going to create a constant and assign it the tuple containing the auth data result that we just got back and the Apple ID credential, which we need to pass into our FB auth handle function. Now I can call FB auth handle and deal with the result. If it's a failure, we'll just print out the localized description. If it's a success, we'll print out successful login, and this will initiate a state change and refresh our views. Let's try that out. Remember, if you're running on your simulator, you'll have to be signed into an account. I'll tap on continue and choose to share my full name, and I'm going to choose hide my email. And since I'm on the simulator, I'll need to continue and enter my password. And after authentication, the account is created in Firestore and Firebase, and I'm signed in with my full name displayed. So let's log out now and try this on a real device. This time when I tap on the continue with Apple button, it asks me if I want to continue and since I have an iPhone XS Max, I have Face ID. And notice it's associated with my Kratex All account. And after authentication, I'm signed in. Before I finish, let's return to our Firebase console for our project. I see I now have two users created the previous sign in with email account in this new sign in with Apple one that has this cryptic looking email, not my real email address. And this is because I chose to hide my email. And in our Firebase users collection, here's that second new entry for Stuart Lynch. And I'm going to copy that email address. I can actually use this address to log in by email if I knew what the password was. I don't, however, but guess what? I could actually request a password reset. And because this email address is registered with Apple and Google, the forwarding will actually work and I'll get a message that allows me to change the password and I can log in then after using either email or sign in with Apple. So let's try that out. I'll run on the simulator and request a password reset for that email that I just copied. Looks like it was successful. This time it takes a little longer to receive the email, but eventually the email gets routed to your Apple ID email address. And this is a different account from the one that we saw in the previous video. This one is associated with my Apple ID. Also, I'll click on the link and enter a new password. Now let me try to log in with that password. I'll use the same copied email and the password that I just set. Done. I can now log into this account using either email or Apple ID. Now the end user will never know what that email address is unless you tell them, but for you during debugging, this might be something worthwhile knowing. Though this series has focused on Swift UI, most of this can also be applied to UIKit. It's just easier with Swift UI and the environment object. I've purposely separated out the Firestore and Auth groups so that you can drop these groups into any project, including ones that use UIKit. There's no Swift UI dependency there. You'll just need to create your login flow and interface to use view controllers but they will closely resemble those files that I provided in this group here. The actions will be very similar. 
calling the same functions in the Firestore and auth groups. If you want to incorporate this into an existing Swift UI project, you can use all three groups because the existing content will start here. You can replace your content view with this file, and then all you have to do is replace your previous content view file here, where I have home view. And make sure that you include your environment object when it appears to retrieve the Firebase user information. Well, that was a bit of a marathon, but I hope you've learned something. If you like this video and series, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Tap the bell to be notified on any new videos that I create, and be sure to follow me on Twitter, where I am most active. Thanks for watching.